What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Swindler's Fair Nerd, and today we are looking at the Magic Square Munitioner, I think was his name, and it's their take on the uh, mad, uh, Masterpiece Scaled Swindle, upscaled from their Legend Size Swindle. At first, I wasn't as wowed by this as I was with their Brawl, but time will tell if I feel like it is a good figure or not. I bought this myself for my personal collection, having a little bit of regret initially about this, I'll be honest, but we'll see how it pans out. I'm having hope that it might get me in the end. Only one way to tell though, and that's by taking a look at it, but in order to do so, we need to first take a look at accessories. He comes with an alternate face with the smirk, which I think is important. Uh, it's actually more of a full smile than a smirk, which I wish it wasn't, but um, it does come with this and I'll probably be using this. It comes with this spare tire. Uh, we have silver paint on the wheel and then black plastic for the tire itself. That'll peg into his back in robot mode. The tire will plug into the back of the vehicle as expected. He comes with like his signature arm cannon, uh, fully painted this gunmetal silver, which looks great. And that can just tab onto his shoulder so that it can sit, you know, the way that it was in the show. A little bit of a tight tolerance, probably because of lack of accountability for the paint. He also comes with his gun. Once again, it has that brilliant gunmetal silver on it, as well as the handle that flips up or down. That'll tab into the palm of his hand in typical masterpiece style. And then you just wrap the fingers around. And of course, it comes with this adapter, which you can plug in your bits to. But once again, I, I don't know if they fully accounted for the layer of paint. But there, there's one. And then this one, you use the peg on the handle. There's two. This plugs in uh, like you would expect in vehicle mode in between these, these two bits. You can kind of wiggle them a bit and get that planted in there, get it back and then kind of have your you know, your swindle, your classic swindle look. Now, if you really wanted to be Freaky Friday, you could take this handle once again, tab it into the palm of his hand with both of these weapons on it and have like the mega, uber mega weapon, if you so desire. You can also extend this rifle. This bit, the <clears throat> adapter bit plugs into the back here. And then you just sort of sort how you want this to go. You have the handle, which once again will plug in to the palm of the hand and he can hold it as like an extended rifle. All right, so let's take a look at the figure and we'll get in tight on the head sculpt for Dennis. And it's okay. Um, he has a little bit of a pouty mouth on this face, which is not my favorite, you know. Uh, luckily it does come with that alternate face option. So I don't know, man. I don't know why this one's bumming me out. You know, there's something about this one that's just not doing it, but I'll swap that face out and see if that makes a difference at some point. Anyway, uh, fully painted. The black is painted. The purple's painted. The gray is painted. Um, the head gets all the way up. Great range there. No issues whatsoever. And all the way down. Well, no, as far as it can go anyway. And then the swivel and no confused look. All right. So then we have shoulders, universals, with an extra hinge that gets you all the way up, which is nice. 360 around, no butterfly. Bicep swivel, single hinge, whoa, that collapses. It comes in box that way too, as a, as a matter of fact. Single hinge elbow that gets you past 90 degrees. Ooh, wrist swivel, tight little joint, black and gray faux tire. Same on the other side. For the chest here, we have the translucent window there. Um, I think maybe they should have painted that. Uh, I think that might have helped make this figure pop a little bit. Waist swivel. We get an ab crunch over to there. We get a reverse ab crunch as well. And then hips. So hips are once again an issue on this figure the same way they were for Braun. Get all these hip skirts out of the way. So we can talk about it a little bit. Um, universals, right? So the ratchets in the universals are too big. The teeth are too widespread. So there's a lot of wiggle in the movement. 
um, you get out to there, so full Van Dam. You get all the way back and pass forward for the full Monty. So no issues there. Thigh swivel, double jointed knee for the full run. Ankles, no real ankle tilt down. You get a bit of a toe tilt up slightly and then a rocker to the full degree. On the, the legs are painted, everything's painted here. Gray and black deco for the faux wheels on the back. And then there he is from the back to give you an idea. Um, pretty clean, you know, uh, not surprisingly so, right? Let's do, um, I really want to look at him next to Brawl. You know, I think that hopefully that will give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Part of the issue is like these little hip skirts here. You got to rotate that whole piece in. The Legends had the same issue in order to get that hip skirt in. It's just little obnoxious stuff like that. That's all in this area is where the problems are. Size comparison wise, there it is next to the Magic Square Brawl. So pretty much right on target. Brawl's chest sits up a little higher, stuff like that. I think that that sort of stuff does make an impact on the shelf, a little bit of variety. I just think Brawl looks more interesting, right? Like this is what I was kind of talking about with like not being as wild. Little stuff, this bump out stuff, little design stuff up in there, all on the legs. It just has a little bit more of a oomph to it than this swindle does. The swindle just feels a little bit more on the soulless side to me in that regard. But there they are size wise. And simply because one good turn deserves another, there it is with the Unique Toys Swindle. So, quite a difference. You know, and I just like, I, I like stuff like this. Like, some of this I like better, don't get me wrong. Like, um, I feel like this part up here doesn't quite do it as well. And I think this had light piping, or no, yeah. Did it have light piping? Yeah, like stuff like that used to always drive me nuts. It still does to this day, but... Um, I don't know. It just has a little bit more life to it, man. I don't. I don't. You know, it's, it's subjective. It's preference. But even stuff like this, just little black lines and the bumper and stuff like this, just looks very like coloring book to me. I don't know. It it just doesn't wow me the same way that the brawl did. Let's get it transformed. But I did realize I forgot to go over the um, all the articulation in the hand. So there is a hinge outward. The fingers are individually articulated, well, the index fingers individually articulated, and then the other three are on a base knuckle and a secondary knuckle, index on a base knuckle and secondary knuckle, and then the thumb is on a ball peg that comes out to a secondary knuckle. All right, okay, then we're going to curl these up into fists. We're going to spin the arms 180, collapse them. You have to open this up. Flip the hand in, bring this around, make sure it's nice and flat, and then bring that piece up. And we're going to do the same on this side. We're going to bring the arm up, we're going to spin it 180, we're going to collapse it, we're going to open, this up. Flip the hand in, and then sit that up against the uh, bicep, collapse it in, flip this panel up. Let's get the arms put away. So rotate his head so that you have some space, and get this panel up, and then rotate it back so you can get this panel up. You can rotate it, I think, to the back here. And then unplug the head from the back, which will allow you to open all this up. I'm going to take this off, too. And these you can kind of flay out just to give yourself room to work here. All right, let's see what we got to do here. The head can tuck down. That's easy. The abdomen and chest have to kind of disconnect and then that section flips out you can extend this the windshield flips up spins around slides forward all the way alrighty now, these pieces need to flip in, but you have to clear the space 
underneath. So just make sure that that little brown piece is out of the way. And then that will flip in. Little beige brown piece out of the way. And then that will flip in. And then you have to get these arms on the underside as well. So just rotate them down and then rotate them up and then push them forward until that section becomes flush. So same on this side. Rotate them down. Rotate them up and then push them forward until that becomes flush. Real quick, I did this, I just realized I did this backwards. So make sure that you have the head of Swindle towards the front of the Jeep and then it will drop down. And then you have this section here which you can bring out and then the bumper flips down and then slides together and this all sits down there's two tabs underneath the purple hood that tab in to the top of the Jeep. Oh, I've missed something else. This little thing here flips in. Then it should tab in with no problem. Then the only other thing that you have to do is this section. These wheels there's a port there. Just rotate this down so that the port can tab into the tab. And then, oh, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on one second. Yo. Hey, can you hold on one second? All right, I'll give you one second. Then there's another tab here. Same on this side. Rotate the wheel down, fold up, and there's another tab in there. I'll get that off camera because I got a phone call. Be right back. All right, let's get a little bit of prep work done before we get to the legs. Rotate the waist 180, flip the steering wheel out. <clears throat> I don't know if we can connect this now or not. Let's just not. Uh, rotate the thighs 180. And then push the thighs back onto the calves or the shins so that the block in front of the shins is as, is as extended as it can be. All right, let's get some of these big panels out of the way. Rotate the foot down. And this panel off this panel back here untabs as well this comes on the back and this tabs in back onto itself then there's this panel you got to get this black part here flipped all the way around and then the part with the foot, there's a tab here that goes back into the thigh. This is typical kind of magic square stuff where it just explodes in a trillion pieces. Pegs into the thigh, uh, no problem. Flip this out, raise it up. Basically, man, like just everything has got to, to move. So bring this tire around and collapse it back onto itself. 
Now obviously the tire needs to be on the other side, so we're going to rotate this whole section around. And we're going to extend this. Let's see, we got to get this guy out of the way. We're going to extend this and rotate it. Did I have it down? Or it needs to click in. This comes around to the other side. And then here is where you want to kind of start lining this up. So this piece slides out and folds around. Then you got to spin the toe 180, tuck it in. This piece comes in and collapses against the side as well. Then that rear piece will tab in. This section rocks back. This section rocks back. And this section, you do have to fold out this little piece. Uh, where's my spudger? There we go. That comes around and then that plugs in. And it's just a matter of kind of making sure everything is tight. There's there's ports and stuff all over this thing. You just gotta make sure you got it all lined up. There's another one here at the hip skirt. And then this has got to tab in somewhere. That's supposed to stay tabbed in there. Okay. I'm going to try to do this one all in one take. So, no promises. Untab all this stuff. Open this up. Untab the back piece. This comes up. It's on a double hinge. You can collapse this, tab it in. This does rotate though um it doesn't i'm even thinking of another piece i get confused myself okay this piece foot comes down the front part disconnects i said front part disconnects This is the piece that moves out of the way there. And then this section opens up. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of room here by opening up this panel and rotating out to the side. Just so you can see clearly. Okay, so <clears throat> this comes down and what do we have to do? All right, so all this stuff. So the tire flips around, collapses onto itself. This whole section here spins 180. This piece is on a slider. It needs to rotate down and then plug in. Some of, the, some of this will be intuitive because you're just kind of building the frame of the vehicle. Um, and then what all are we doing here? So this piece here slides down, that builds the back. This piece here extends and rotates around. Now I'm gonna to have to collapse this just a little bit. Rotates around. The foot spins, make sure it's the foot, I mean the toe and not the whole foot, and then collapses. And this section tabs into the upper thigh and then this section comes down and swings in to that little cavity, which will allow this to come around and tab into the back of it. 
Um, this section here rotates back and this section you do have to get the uh, chair out flip it around this section rotates to the opposite side and collapses in and then you want to collapse both of these together make sure you can fix your hip skirts if you did what I did tab them together and tab anywhere that needs it and there and this comes up and you might have to open this up because there's like a dovetail connection point but then that will grab a hold of it pretty solidly I'll work on getting that squoze together as tightly as possible. Uh, I'll clean it up and we'll take a look at it. I'll see if I got anything wrong. Looks like that's collapsed a little bit more, but um, I think that's it. I'll clean it up and we'll take a look at it. Don't forget to flip out that little part of the bumper there. I forgot it on the second one. And there it is in vehicle mode. And once again, you know, very, very simple, right? You know, purposefully so. Uh, you can probably get this tighter a little bit you know, squeezing, 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 squeezing. Um, I think part of the reason why of this is because of the wide tooth ratchets. But um, let me get a size comparison real quick so that you don't have to worry about that. There is Tiger Track, so a little bit bigger than an MP car. Rolls like a champ. Wheels are painted silver. You got the steering wheel in there. The, sil the, the seats are painted with a glossy black. They're also sculpted to look um, like leather. You know, this purple here is off-putting because it is like your typical Magic Square look instead of the kind of new masterpiece finish of paint that they've been doing. We got the headlights there in the front as well as the bumper and the, the winch. So all of that looks nice. Plastic tires, rolls well. You know, I don't think there's anything left to say. It does a decent enough job of what it's supposed to do. All right, let's go to combine mode. So we had to just do a couple things to basically put this, um, we had to put this steering wheel away. So just open up these connections on the side, put the steering wheel in, put this back, and then close up your connections on the side once more. There we go. And actually at this point you want to take your tire and plug your tire in and then collapse your windshield down. And then you just, oh God, I spent all that time getting it as tightly together as could. Open this up, take your combiner leg, extend it just like the other one. This has little teeth down there that need to fit up inside of this connection here. Collapse that onto it. Oh shoot. You gotta make sure that you come in at an angle here. There. Collapse that on, bring this up. There's a tab in the back that connects and that's it uh, I'll clean it up we'll take a look at it and there it is I forgot one thing uh, flip this down you know otherwise I think I got it right you know decent enough bot leg I'm not gonna pass judgment on it now until we kinda really put it together but you know feels sturdy feels locked in what more could you want
Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. The lack of detailing and very, very, very simple deco assortment on this guy makes it seem less than premium to me. Coupled with things like them still not being able to figure out the hip ratchets, probably largely due to the speed at which this came out. I'm not sure if they'll ever figure it out because I'm not sure they've even had time to process any potential criticism. There's some wonkiness to the way the hips work in general with the plates moving in and out and being able to account for them. There's a lack of accountability of the tolerances due to pain application and the mouth is a little poorly uh sculpted on both faces i don't know i think if they were going to go full tune they might as well painted that windshield too while they were at it it just seems like something undone now because of how kind of close they were trying to get it and i, I mean i kind of feel the same way about the jeep mode too so it's like kind of a beating a dead horse and I, I don't really have any interest in that but it's just you know it doesn't really kind of evoke any sort of real world vehicle element and that's a subjective thing but i prefer a little bit of that and i i, I knew it wasn't right Right, because I, I'm familiar with the Legends figure, but um, something translates a little bit better with the brawl for me than, than this one. Moving on to the positives, uh, it really gets the cartoon accuracy with a little bit more of exaggerated proportions for a more heroic look, so they get that part right, and a lot of people are going to be very pleased with that. It's painted from head to toe. I think a more vibrant metallic paint still would have been better, but they went with more of like a glossy finish, which does look good, but I think may have been a misstep just due to the simplisticness of the sculpt. Articulation works great. You get all the basic stuff, as well as the ab crunch, deep elbows, deep knees, full hip range, etc., so all that. That works nicely comes with the appropriate accessory assortment the materials feel good the build is decent with the exception of the hips also, I gotta say, like the transformation I think works better in this larger scale with Magic Square than it does in the Legend scale because it's all these little plant panels that flip and flap all over the place. That's just Magic Square style. But with them being bigger panels, it does lend itself to a more enjoyable experience in Masterpiece scale. So I actually, I enjoy these a lot more than I do the Legends, in all honesty, just in terms of going through the process. So yeah, there's definitely enough good here for me to recommend it. I think the combined mode is solid. So I, it's, a, it's a recommend for for me undoubtedly it's just a little bit of a disappointment in comparison to their brawl for me and i really need them to fix those hips hope that helps thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care